Hey, what's my fellow prodigy? It's Prodigy a Hero, just call me Jay, and today I'm gonna teach you guys how to make your thumbnails look more professional like me and other YouTubers because I received a lot of requests to do this video. And plus, the last thumbnail tutorial I made was like last year, which is kind of outdated now because I learned more about making thumbnails. Now, if you're new to my channel, be sure to go subscribe to notifications because I do like to upload quality videos for everyone to enjoy. And go follow my Twitter while you're at it. And shout out to Richie for the classy comment on my previous video. But if you leave a comment on the video, you have a chance to get a shout out. And guys, let's do get 70 likes in today's video because I do appreciate it. But without further ado, Let's get into today's video. And just a disclaimer, I will be teaching you guys how to make your thumbnails look more professional like mine, but I will not be teaching you guys how to exactly copy my style because what's the point of watching a video about making your thumbnails unique and different and I just show you guys how to copy one specific style and give you guys a template. Well, this will be a different video compared to others as I'm going to try and give you guys 5 universal tips that will surely improve the way your thumbnails look. And also, I highly recommend that you know all the basic controls of Photoshop before watching this. Now starting off, we're going to be in our photo editing program known as Photoshop CS6, but if you don't have Photoshop, instead of Pixlr or GIMP or something like that, you can still follow this tutorial since the tips can be used in any program. Now to start this off, you want to click File, then click New, then right here, you just want to copy down my settings, make the width and height 1920 by 1080 and make the resolution 72 and everything else that you see here. And if you guys want to, you can save this as a preset so you don't have to type in these settings every time you go and make a thumbnail. And once you have all these settings saved and done, you'll be ready to start making your thumbnail. Which will bring us to my first tip which is a brainstorm your layout. Which when brainstorming your layout, you should be picturing how the overall thumbnail should look going from the background to the eye catching text and everything else that would make the thumbnail look good. Are you going to have the text on the left side or on the right side? Are you going to have the text in the middle? What type of picture is going to use? How should the overall color theme look in the thumbnail? Which these are just some of the questions that you should be asking yourself when brainstorming your thumbnail. And yes, I do understand a lot of people have trouble coming up with like a thumbnail layout or just a style in general because there are so many thumbnail styles out there on YouTube that you might not know where to start. Well, if you're having trouble thinking of a style, try looking at other people's thumbnails and try getting some inspiration from them but make sure you turn to your own style somewhere or form so it doesn't look like you took your time to copy their thumbnail which if you guys didn't know I got myself from getting inspiration from others like how I use the font that Zyova uses in his thumbnails or how I use like the yellow orange gradient from the guy hates Nick and so on which basically what I'm trying to say here is that you have a wide variety of ideas at your disposal and the only limit for coming up with like a thumbnail style or layout is just your imagination and once you figure out what thumbnail layout you're gonna do it's time for tip number two which is the background now one thing you should know that everyone's just background so most likely going to be different depending on the video topic and I know some of you guys might think that the background really isn't that important but it really is because the background is supposed to help bring attention to the thumbnail and help with the overall color scheme that you want for example if you want your thumbnail to have like a red blue color scheme overall you can try and find like a nice background pick that's colors red and blue all over it so your thumbnail will have a better color scheme now after explaining all of that some of you guys might be still wondering what type of background you should do for your thumbnail well it's actually kind of hard for me to exactly tell you what's the best background to use because in the end it's all about how you want your style to be. So my best tip that I can give for you for picking out a good background pick is to make sure that it goes with the synergy for the rest of the thumbnail, which basically means make sure it looks right to you. But for me, my normal style for backgrounds is to make them vibrant and colorful, so I'm going to bring in this colorful background pick that I edited before this video. And by the way, when you want to resize a picture, you want to hold shift and drag to make the image bigger and proportionate. Also a good tip for picking out a good background picture is make sure that the background isn't too distracting because you want your text and picture to stand out as much as possible. Which as you can see right here my background is a good example of not being too distracting because of the Gaussian blur on it which if you want to add blur to your background make sure you have the layer highlighted click filter go to blur then right here you'll be able to add Gaussian blur to your layer which if you want to know I normally use a radius of 40 pixels or higher for my blur and adding blur to your background is just one of the many ways you can make your background less distracting when placing your text and picture over it. Now it's time for tip number three which is the text. Now the first thing you need to do when we're going to text is find a font that will be eye catching the thumbnail. Now I can't really tell you what's the best font for thumbnails since certain thumbnail styles look better with certain fonts but one of my tips for finding good fonts is just looking up best fonts videos or whatever because those videos already have a nice selection picked up by a graphic designer or such, which the font I'll be using today is called Arrow, which I actually found on a top 10 best fonts video. And another thing you should know about picking a font is that the font should somewhat represent your content away. And yes, I know it sounds weird, but whatever font you choose should represent your content or your channel in a way because it shows style. For example, if someone had like a cartoony style through their channel, they might use like a rounded bubbly font like Grow Bold because it looks cartoony, which I chose Arrow as my font for this video because it's eye-catching and it represents my content in the sense of it looking slick and smooth. So once you figure it out, 
out what font you're gonna use, just use the text tool and type the first part of your text, making sure to resize while holding shift. And I personally like to make sure that my text is big because you don't wanna have like a thumbnail with a lot of empty space. And just a quick side note, I'm not telling you to put your text over here, but I'm telling you to place your text based on how you initially brainstormed your thumbnail at the beginning of this tutorial. But I'm placing my text on the left side because I like having my layout like that and help align your other text. You can drag a line from the ruler so you can be more accurate. Now looking at our text, you'll see how bland it looks because it's just a plain white font against the background. Well, we're gonna change that so our text stands out. So all you gotta do is click on text layer, right click, then click on blending options. And once that opens up, this will be where all your creativity comes into play because you can add a ton of effects to your text like bevel and emboss, stroke, inner shadow, a gradient, a drop shadow, and more. Which for this tutorial, I already have like a style saved and that I can play to my text. And by selecting the style, I already have like certain settings saved on here. But right now, you should basically understand the concept that there's a lot of things they can do to your text with all the blending options. And my personal tip for this part of the video is look up different blending options or different text styles on YouTube because you might find something that you like and another thing I highly recommend that you look up how to make a gradient if you don't know how to do so already because I'm just gonna say right now if your text doesn't have like a good gradient on it then it's gonna look bland now this is all my personal opinion like I know there are other youtubers who don't use gradients in their thumbnails but I highly recommend that you add a gradient to your text and also a stroke of that but all in all you got to find out what you want your text to look like now for this tutorial I decided that I won't be adding a draft shadow to my text because I'm gonna do a little like style with the text later but for the rest of the text just follow my tips that I did with the first text and you should be good which when making your other text I recommend that you just duplicate your original text then move it to where you want it to be then edit it like so and quick side note you want to make sure that your text is right to the point because you don't want like a super long title in your thumbnail because it's just not gonna look like appealing now once you got all your text done you should be ready for tip number four but for me I'm gonna do a little style with the text by rasterizing my layers together then merging them which by doing this I can go back into blending options and add a stroke to the text but this time I can make the stroke wrap around all of the text so it gives me more like a cartoony look which just for a quick side note I want to make sure that you guys know that I'm not teaching you guys on how to copy this exact style but instead hope open your eyes to what you can do because if you guys didn't know there's like way more stuff they can do to your thumbnails if you do a little more research in certain things like making cool text or different picture effects because everything I'm teaching you guys right now is just the bare minimum of like what you can do which will actually lead me to tip number four pictures now the tricky thing with pictures is that there's so many different ways that you can add them into your thumbnails for example I got a picture of a transparent border that I use in all my thumbnails mostly because I just like the look of it now of course you don't need to add like a border to your thumbnails because honestly it all comes down to personal preference and some thumbnails in my opinion look better without a border now a good tip that I recommend most people to do when adding pictures into their thumbnails is to make sure to use high resolution pictures as much as possible and the reason you want to do this is because it will give like a more clean and crisp look compared to like a low resolution picture that is 40 p so for this video i decided to use the photoshop logo with a resolution of 2000 by 2000 now when positioning your photos for thumbnails you want to make sure they add your photos in a unique way or just a way that looks nice with the thumbnail for example i said i put the photoshop logo behind the text and rotated it just a little bit just to get that nice look and just a quick side note i know this may sound obvious but when you add a picture most of the time it's going to be a png where you plan on using a picture as a background and you want to cut out i highly recommend that you use a pen tool because it's the most accurate cutting tool in photoshop which if you guys don't know how to use a pen tool or just how to cut objects out in general just look it up on youtube because there's multiple ways of doing so now moving on once you have your photo or photos positioned the way you want them to it's time to use blending options like we did for our text and once again this is gonna be where your creativity comes into play and i can't exactly tell you what you should add to your pictures because everyone's pictures are going to be different but i will tell you guys that most of the time i like to add bevel and emboss to my picture so they look a bit more cartoony and natural looking in the thumbnail but i just wanted a video your thumbnail should be almost finished and look appealing assuming that you followed all my tips correctly up until this point but we are not done yet because we still have to do a few finishing touches to our thumbnail which will lead us to tip number five color correction now i don't think i need to talk too much about this tip mostly on the fact that most people have their own preferences on what type of color correction they like in their thumbnails but anyways in order to add color correction to your thumbnail go to layer then adjustment layer then right here you'll see you have access to a lot of different effects well i'm actually going to add hue and saturation to my picture just so i can change the tone of the blue and now i actually want to tell you guys one of my biggest tricks i do to all my thumbnails to make them look nicer and that's by adding vibrance now vibrance basically helps bring out the colors and everything help me get like a more colorful look in your thumbnails and that's not the only color correction setting i use in my thumbnails either sometimes i use colored curves or i may use brightness and contrast depending on the thumbnail and once you finish color correcting your thumbnail you should be done but before you call it quits and you export your thumbnail 
ask yourself these three questions. Does the thumbnail have a nice style? Does it have high quality? And last but not least, does it stand out? And if you said no to any of these three questions, then I highly recommend that you go back and edit your thumbnail so you answer all three questions with a yes. And I'm saying this because if you have a bad thumbnail, people aren't really gonna click on your video because if your thumbnail looks bad, then they're gonna assume that your video is bad too. So once you for sure that you're done with the thumbnail, click on file, then save as, then save your thumbnail as a PNG in the desired location that you wanted to be in. And after saving your thumbnail, you should come out with a nice result assuming that you followed all my tips. And last thing, before I end off this long video, I want you guys to know that everything that I said in this video isn't going to answer everyone's questions about making thumbnails because some stuff that you guys want to know is just going to require you guys to do more research, look it up on a video on how to do it. And I'm saying this because certain people have different expectations when watching like a thumbnail tutorial like this. And my thumbnail tutorial was meant for people to learn some general tips on how to improve their thumbnails which i hope you guys know that there are a crap ton of different things that you guys can do to your thumbnails that i didn't show in the video like how to add like a glow effect to your thumbnails or like how to add branding to your thumbnails and etc but overall thumbnail making just requires time and learning so don't be disappointed if your thumbnail isn't the very best because in the end you're going to keep improving on making thumbnails as long as you follow my tips and do a bit more research too and besides thumbnail making all comes down to personal preference in the end because everyone is going to have a different style but i think that's going to wrap it up now i hope you guys enjoyed the video but if you guys can can, drop a like I do appreciate the support and go follow me on Twitter because I do like to tweet out daily also if you guys can comment down below what new thing you learned after watching this video and comment any questions you may have after watching this because I want to hear what you guys had to say we got to do a little responding to everyone's comments and last thing I'm sorry that it seems like I have been slacking on my channel lately most because I've been so tired from doing schoolwork and working my job that sometimes I just don't really have the energy to work on a video and I don't want to work on a video where you guys can tell that I don't have the energy for because I actually take my time when editing my videos because I want them to be the best for you guys. Now, of course, I'm never going to quit making YouTube videos because I still love making them, but I will say that I will be trying my very best to upload as much as possible because I love making videos for you guys and just reading the positive comments. But anyways, thanks for watching, and let's see if we get 70 likes in today's video. Now subscribe for more content in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next one.